This is the 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport. It is the most off-road ready version of the Honda Pilot you can buy. But can it tackle our mountain covered in snow? We're gonna find out right now on Driving Sports TV. All new back in 2023, the 2024 Honda Pilot Trail Sport is exactly the same thing. But that's not bad. Where the smaller Passport Trail Sport we tested recently was only a mild refresh, the 2023 Pilot Trail Sport we tested last year received all the stuff we had been asking for. A proper skid plate, recovery points, trail camera, an off-road focused trail mode, and a beefed up rear differential. Honda even gave it 8.3 inches of ground clearance, which is an inch more than the standard Pilot, and all-terrain tires. Under the hood is a revised 3.5 liter V6 engine. This produces a peak 285 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque. A 10-speed automatic is the only transmission option. For all-wheel drive, the Trail Sport uses Honda's excellent IVTM4 system with some trail-specific enhancements. This can send up to 70% of available power to the rear wheels, and 100% of that can shift from side to side. A new trail mode optimizes this system for rough conditions. EPA rates economy at 18 in the city and 23 on the highway. Price of our test vehicle as it sits here with optional Sonic Gray Pearl paint, 50,500 US dollars, including destination. In the back, you simply get loads of cargo space. In fact, this is one of the reasons why you would pick the Pilot over something else. Fold the seats down for a massive amount of cargo space. Plus the floor lays flat. We also get extra cargo storage under there and a power socket here. Is that 12 volt? And below the floor, that's actually a full-size matching spare. Very rare to see on a vehicle like this. Not only can this tow hitch handle 5,000 pounds, the chain stays actually work as recovery points for the vehicle. They're rated at twice the vehicle weight. Today, the plan is to drive this a couple hundred miles from here out on the Washington State Peninsula over Snoqualmie Pass to our mountain test course on the other side of the mountains. There we'll tackle whatever conditions mother nature chooses to throw at us. I'm expecting wet snow and quite a lot of it. Let's see what this can do and floor it. I do like the sound of the Honda V6. It's not bad. The weather out in central Washington has been pretty crazy over the last few weeks. Uh, when we filmed the Subaru Crosstrek versus RAV4 video there just a couple weeks ago, it was one degree Fahrenheit. That's negative 17 degrees Celsius. Well, today I'm expecting it to be about 40 degrees maybe even a little bit warmer. Again, Fahrenheit. So <laughs> it's gonna be very different conditions. Now, when we had very cold weather out there, it did dump a ton of snow. So the snow is still there. I know there is snow on the mountain, but I don't know what kind of snow it's gonna be. Is it gonna be super wet and icky with the compacts into ice? Probably. But then again, maybe I'll be surprised. I do have cameras out on the mountain so I can see what the weather conditions are, but you really don't know what the roads are gonna be like until you're on them. The seats I find very comfortable. I can get them adjusted just right. Um, I also have three stages of heat and at the warmest setting, it is super toasty. Although it does reset the heat to medium every once in a while. So I then have to cycle that back to the hottest setting. If I wanna get this injured shoulder to work any better. I pulled it a few days ago, not feeling great. So if I whine and complain a little bit, it's probably because of the shoulder today. I love the steering wheel. It just feels so good. Um, and I love it when manufacturers focus on touch points like this, where, you know, your fingers do kind of tell you a story. And it's nice to have one where you're like, ooh, this is luxurious. And I have to say, compared to like a 4Runner, this is way more comfortable on the highway because it is all-wheel drive. I don't have to switch it from two-wheel to four-wheel. Um, also, 
independent suspension all around. It just makes for a really nice cruiser of a vehicle. And that gets me thinking about what would you compare this with? And I, I hate to say it, but yeah, Forerunner is kind of the main competitor uh, because this has the extra off-road equipment and it actually has real off-road equipment, such as a skid plate that you can actually, you know, recover the vehicle with. That's a pretty burly skid plate and the all-terrains and the race suspension and a trail mode. I think that, yeah, this competes against Forerunner, but they're very, very different vehicles. I mean, the Forerunner being a body on frame, it drives like an older style truck. This being a unibody, it drives more like a modern crossover. So if you find that you're gonna be on the highway a lot or driving in the city, I think the Pilot will be the better choice. If you don't mind that kind of dippy, tilty, not great turning radius uh, chassis of the Forerunner, and you want that extra capability that a model like the TRD Off-Road can get you, then definitely go Forerunner. Because as this is priced at around $50,000, this is actually more expensive than a really nicely equipped TRD Off-Road version of the Forerunner. You could almost buy a TRD Pro for the price of this thing. And that, I think, is really the big issue here. Now, of course, the current Forerunner does not offer three row seating. Uh, for that, you need to move up to a larger vehicle. But I think in terms of like a two row, they're very competitive, just very, very different. <laughs> of course, this has adaptive cruise control. I can turn that on as we uh, kick back and start climbing up the mountain pass. So far, we're averaging 19.1 MPGs over the last hour, which isn't great. I guess, you know, there's something to be said for hybrid four cylinders and turbo fours. They can yield better MPGs in certain situations. Oh, well, moving on. As we're climbing up the mountain pass here, there's still plenty of snow on the side of the roads, but it definitely looks very wet. And that's because it's a 45 degrees out. Wow, things have warmed up. We definitely had our El Nino effect kick in with an atmospheric flow of moisture into the area. It's definitely brought those temperatures up and uh, yeah, it's gonna be weird today. <laughs> so different than last time we were up here. Yeah, so far, really enjoy driving the Honda Pilot. In terms of comparing this versus the slightly smaller Passport, I do prefer this vehicle and it's because it's really not that much bigger than the Passport in, in any consequential way. Uh, Plus, you, even if you keep that third row folded, you still have a ton of room in the back, and this one is just better equipped than the Passport for the money, in my opinion. I mean, you get the trans cooler, you get all the attachment points, you get the skid plates underneath, you basically get all the stuff that you really want on the Passport, but it comes from the factory on this one. And of course, you have trail logic with the new drive unit. Overall, this vehicle is just so much better equipped for off-road adventures than the Passport. Now the Passport does get the General Grabber tires, which I like better than these Continentals. So you can't have everything, I guess. Of course, if you buy the Pilot, you can always get better tires in the aftermarket, uh, but if you buy the Passport, you're not gonna be upgrading to that new rear drive unit. So there's that. Now that we've made it over the pass, final assessment on comfort. This is a really comfortable vehicle to drive. It rides nice. The seats are comfortable. I have no complaints whatsoever about this. I would be very happy to have this as a daily driver, whether I'm driving 20 minutes to work or four hours. Although heaven help me if I were to have a four hour commute. Yee. Although when I think about it, when I'm filming out at our mountain test course, I do have a two and a half hour commute each way. Huh. Oh well, best not to think about it. Totally worth it for you guys. Final word on MPGs, 18.9. Uh, so, you know, it really didn't go down too much with the climb, but <laughs> either way, it's not great. If you're looking for like ultimate MPGs and you want all wheel drive, you would do better, I think, looking at something like a Toyota Highlander, which may not be as technically cool, as capable off-road or, you know, anything like this. <laughs> but it does have all wheel drive and it has way better MPGs. So if you do need to commute and that is the primary concern and you want all the space, just get yourself a Highlander. It's, it's gonna be a good choice. Okay, so here we are. We have a number of hills we can use on 
our mountain test course, I'm going to use the one that we haven't driven up since we had our last big snow. So this is, I don't say it's fresh because it's not. The big snow was actually about a week ago, uh, but it is undisturbed snow. The temperature outside is 39 degrees, so this is going to be very wet. Let's take a look outside and see just exactly what kind of conditions we're dealing with here. But first, I'm going to get into my snow gear. Okay, let's see what we got. Whoa, it's slippery. So, we have about that much snow. Obviously, it's very wet because it's way above freezing. It's about 40 degrees outside. It's raining a little bit off and on. Uh, so the condition we're going to have is as soon as the wheels go over the snow, it's going to immediately ice up. If we get through that ice, then below that is mud because this is just a dirt road. Now the grade here maxes out at about 18 degrees. So it does get pretty steep at the end. Let's see how it does. Okay, let's do this. Whew. We're of course gonna start off a little bit less aggressive, a little bit flatter. And then as we go, it's gonna get steeper and steeper. Along the way, we're gonna test out a number of different drive modes to see which is best for snowy conditions. Now, normally you would think, ah, snow, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you want more wheel spin than the snow mode will give you, especially when you're rolling on all terrains. Go ahead and put it into drive. Uh, so the first mode, let's test, is snow mode because that's what most people would go straight to. There we go. Now let's see how it deals with this very slippery condition. Now I'm just gonna throttle in. Now of course I'm stopped on an incline, which is kind of the worst case scenario. Oh, are we gonna make progress here? Is it gonna, is it gonna figure it out? Are we gonna move forward? What? Okay, I kind of expected we'd have to reset and get some more momentum there, but we are actually moving forward. Somewhat like a crab, but we are moving forward. Okay, good. So this is not very steep here, but it's doing a fantastic job of using that IVTM4 all-wheel drive system to shift power to the back and move it side to side as necessary. This is pretty awesome. <laughs> so right here, where it levels out just a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and switch modes because a lot of people have the idea that with all terrains, you wanna to go to something more aggressive and that is the sand mode, which will push maximum power to the back, also allows for a lot of wheel spin. Whereas snow mode will actually back that throttle off so you have more play in the pedal. Sand mode is kind of like a sport mode for off-road where it will put maximum power to the back and also allow for additional wheel spin and it'll also give you a more aggressive pedal. So let's see what this does now. I'm gonna switch this up to trail and sand. There we go. And let's floor it. So the benefit of flooring it with all terrains is that it clears the lugs, which gives you more grab. And grab can actually be a really good thing. Now I have to be, oh, it's cutting power. Oh, up, oh, up, oh, that's not good. So we do have a little ditch on the inside that we have to watch out for and a cliff on the outside. So these is, this would be considered a kind of treacherous condition, although it's a mild version of a treacherous condition because of course, if we do fall off, we would roll, but we wouldn't plummet to our death. So there's that. And still have that sand mode on. I'm gonna try cut to the right a little bit. Ooh, it is severely cutting power, even in sand mode. Kind of surprised by that. And then it ramps it back up. And I'm cutting to the right. And I am just spinning those wheels. <laughs> okay, this is not actually getting me anywhere once I get to the deeper stuff up here. I need more momentum, but I'm on a steep incline and I just can't get it. So to break through that, I am going to try, I'm gonna bump back to snow mode and let's go forward. So now I'm in snow mode. Let's see how it breaks through this section here, if it can. Oh, 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 snow mode for the win. Okay, come on, come on, are we gonna, it's gonna cut power a little bit. So this section of the road right here, you see I'm crabbing to the left. That is because the road actually banks in here. 
which means I'm less likely to fall off the edge, but I'm also more likely to get stuck on the ditch. So reset. I think this is gonna be a whole bunch of backup and resets. Let's go forward, keep that momentum up, see if we can get all the way to grandma's house, the top of the hill, proverbial grandma's house. Nobody actually lives up there. Ah, uh, come on. Now, if you're watching this saying, man, you are chewing up that road. It's okay, it's my road, I own it. Okay, my back up here. This is why we test on our own trails. Uh, because, we, yeah, we know this stuff, doing it all the time, damages the roads underneath. And so we're responsible for that. Okay, let's go. Oh, it's getting deeper up here. That's why. Okay, just keep on going, keep on going, see if we can get to the next flat spot. Okay, we're getting some momentum finally. See if we can get up this last berm to, a next, to the next flat spot. Come on, throttle. Oh, it's steep right here. It's probably about 18 degrees, ah, but it's a short 18 degrees. We have a longer 18 degrees up above. Got to watch for those boulders on the inside. Okay, here we go. Floor it. Can we do this? Can we do this? Now, we're also going to be looking for not just whether we can get up to the top, but whether or not this IBTM4 system is going to overheat under all of this use. Because of course it does use a clutch to move power from the front to the back and those are prone to overheat. Now I'm just keeping the throttle in and the vehicle itself is fluctuating power. My throttle is at about 80% and I'm just keeping it there. So any wheel speed changes you're seeing on the outside are the vehicle itself figuring it out. You can cut the wheel a little bit. Yeah, we're just kind of trenched here. Oh no, it was starting to go forward. Okay, let's not dig a hole. Back up a little bit. Just a little, I don't wanna get on that berm too far back. Throttle in. Yep, got through the next bit. Okay, here we are. But now this has been actually the easiest leg, even though we're not there yet. <laughs> we're almost there. Back up again. And then let's get flat right here. Okay, this has been so far the easy leg. The next part is going to be way harder because we have to go up, we have to take a hard left, and then we have an even steeper climb. So let's get reset here and we're going to set it up a little bit so we can get a little running start here and charge up the rest of the mountain. Okay, I think we're set. Right, so right here I'm actually going to go back to uh, uh, actually, instead of doing sand, let's just do trail, because that's kind of supposed to be a generic, I don't know what mode to pick, uh, mode. So let's toggle to trail. So trail is a new mode here. Uh, it's something that they just added for the pilot trail sport, and I imagine it'll uh, move over to the passport trail sport when that gets updated in a couple of years. What happens when I turn it on is, first off, I get a trail camera up here, which is really cool. Um, second, it optimizes that rear drive unit to give maximum power in tricky situations. Uh, now, granted, it's not a snow mode per se, so this is experimental to see what it can do in conditions like this. Because this is kind of a mixed situation where we're going through the sloppy snow and into the mud. So it's kind of like not a pure snow condition. Let's do it. So I'm gonna back up just a little bit to give myself more of a running start and drive and let's see how it does. Keep those wheels spinning, which is clearing the lugs. You should see large chunks of snow flying off the tires, which gives me a little bit more traction. Ooh, this is doing good so far. Now this is where it gets tricky because we have a steep climb. Oh, it's cutting power. Still cuts power. Yeah, that's a problem. Let's uh, try that again. We've cleared a lot of roadway though. So this should be pretty good for getting up to the next leg. Start here, full throttle. Well, not full, I'm doing about half. And I'm increasing throttle as I get grip. Oh, it's cutting power severely. Like, I'm at full throttle right now. But are we gonna bust through? Yes. Can we turn? Can we turn? Do we have enough power to make the turn? This is super steep right here. Steeper than most roads will be. And, ah! Inching, inching, oh, oh, is it figuring it out? Come on, 
you got this, I'm just keeping my foot in the throttle and we're letting it do its thing. And it's figuring it out, IVTM4 for the win. So it's cutting power so that it tries to regain itself and get grip. But there is a point where we just don't have, and we're also kind of inching out to that cliff over there, which is not ideal. Come on. Ugh, okay, I'm gonna back up a little bit because we're, we're inching that way, which is not where, <laughs> the way I wanna go. Okay, let's get back here. This is where a nice backup camera is definitely a plus. I'm gonna actually reset all the way because I think we need, we need all the track to get all the way up there again. I'm gonna keep it in trail mode though. I like what trail mode did there. Okay, we're reset, drive, and let's floor it. Now, each time we go up, we're clearing a little snow, which makes it a little bit easier to get to the next leg. Oh, and I see the problem here where I cut in. There's a lot more wet snow here on this turn because this is where um, drifts we're collecting. So we definitely need a lot more speed to get through this. And floor it. Can we get this? Can we use all the road? Here we go, here we go, we got momentum. Is it enough, is it enough? No, as soon as the throttle gets killed, boom, we stop. Oh, come on, I feel like we can make this. We have the clearance, we have the power, we're just lacking attraction. So if this was a more aggressive tire, would it get up further easier? Yes, I think so in these conditions. But I mean, I have to give it up to the Continentals, they're not horrible, come on. Although I think the general grabbers on the Passport are better. Last try before we go to plan B. And drive. Wheel spin. You know what? Let's try an alternative plan here. Gonna reset all the way down to the bottom. I wanna try snow mode again. Let's do it. Let's go all the way to snow mode. Go drive, see how this helps the situation, if at all. Now, it might just cut too much power because we're on such a steep incline, or not. Okay, that lower section is definitely cleared enough where it's super easy now. Well, easy to a point. Okay, come on. Ah! Yeah, I just can't do it. It's not doing it. I'm keeping full throttle and we are doing nothing here. Okay, ugh. So if you're looking to see how far you can get with the stock tires at stock pressures, which is about 35 PSI all around, that is as far as we will get today. If you wanna know what will happen if we air down, that's what I'm gonna do right now. So what I'm using here is something called a Ston tire deflator. It's a little thing you add to your wheel that uh, will deflate the tire to a set PSI. I have them set for 18. Um, I'll link them in the YouTube video in the description section. I'm gonna do it in snow mode. Drive, actually no, let's not do snow. Let's go back to trail mode because we had good success there. Now we have less tire pressure. Let's see what that does. Now, 18 PSI is not very extreme. You can do that with most tires. Uh, you don't want to go like much lower though, or you could pop a bead. Look at this, look at this, look at this. We made it up the next climb, super easy so far. Ah, okay, we're gonna have to reset here though, because we're sliding to the side. And I want to get more of a running start here. So we're gonna back up, kind of create a little launch here. So let's see why this section in particular is always so difficult. Now this is the thing with snow. Just because it's level on the surface doesn't mean it's level on the ground. Here we actually have a little more snow. Plus it's been through more freeze thaw cycles. So we actually have more hard ice on the base. That's important because it's less likely that we're gonna churn through it and get the dirt that helps with traction. I mean, dirt's not great traction, but it's better than snow. Okay, I'm gonna put it in drive. I'm gonna keep it in trail and let's see what it can do. And we can slide a lot. Man, this ice, this surface is so much ice here, here. Okay, got a little traction. 
move forward. <laughs> okay, that wasn't great. Let's reset that again and do something a little bit more practical. Uh, let's put it into snow mode. Okay, we're in snow mode. That is gonna cut power, but hopefully that actually improves the situation. Oh, 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 it's getting it. Even with snow mode, we're getting a lot of wheel spin, which I'm actually, frankly, kind of surprised with. Speed on the Speedo was up to 35 there. Sliding left again. I think we're just gonna have to do several attempts to get through this tricky spot. Okay, try to stay to the right. Um, unless, of course, the hill throws me off. Come on, snow mode, you got this. Or you don't. <laughs> Can't believe we made it this far, to be honest. Uh, even this far would be a win on a non-snow rated tire. I mean, non-three-peak rated tire. Especially in these sloppy conditions. These conditions are so tough. Okay, we're going to go back to sand mode. <laughs> Let's just see what this does. Floor it! Try to stay to the right. Oh, yeah, yeah, keep that wheel spin, keep that wheel spin. Oh, it's cutting power now as soon as we hit the deep stuff and it strands us. If it just wouldn't cut power. So let's go ahead and turn off traction control. Cannot be changed in the current drive mode. Okay, well, let's go to, uh, let's go to normal and turn off traction control and see what that does for us. Okay, so normal mode. Let's see if there's a two-stage traction control. So if I hold it down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, there's there's one stage off. There's there's not a dual stage here. It's going to drive. If we can maintain wheel spin as we hit Oh, traction control still kicks in. Man, we are just not making progress here. Floor it! Come on, track, keep momentum, momentum, momentum. Yes, we get through it and it doesn't cut power this time. Oh, it cuts power a little. I'm adding more throttle. Ah, and we're out. Yeah, I mean, we barely got down into the dirt on that one. Uh, drive. Let's go back to snow mode now that we broke that part of the trail. Drive and let's go. Can we make it all the way? All the way. Keep a little momentum. Keep a little momentum. It gets steeper as we go. I'm trying not to spin the wheels, but I'm letting off throttle to kind of reduce, reduce wheel spin. And nope, 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 nope. And we are, we're making good progress here, but uh, I wish it could go a little faster. I just feel like if it wouldn't cut power, as soon as we hit the super slippery stuff, we could just bust up this, but it's not letting me. So all the way down, use the full runway. We're gonna go back to trail mode, drive, sport transmission, and full send. I mean, as much as we can do here. Now, we don't want to get going too fast because if we lose traction and it pushes us to the left, that could push us over the edge and definitely don't want to do that. I mean, it's not death to fall off that ledge, but we certainly could roll the vehicle. Ah. Okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. Okay, I need to go slower, though, because my brakes are on full and I am just sliding. You notice I'm not turning around at all. You don't turn around on a trail. You back down every time. Okay, drive and go. Man, it's getting foggy now. Okay, got some momentum. I got some momentum. It is, oh, we are absolutely on top of ice up here. There is no getting through the ice. Can we keep the momentum? We're keeping the speed up, keeping speed up. I'm trying to cut back on throttle, but oh, as soon as I do, it cuts throttle. Ah! Oh, there is a hill descent control here if I wanted to use it. I can turn that on and it'll actually peg it at a certain descent speed um, using just wheel braking. And it's kind of nice. I can actually adjust it based on uh, approach speed and it tells me what my speed is right in the gauge, which is cool. 
Okay, turn that off again. Go drive. We're still in trail mode. I feel like we are so close. We are gonna absolutely get this. Come on, keep that momentum. Don't shunt off the edge. Oh yeah, are we gonna get this? I think we're gonna get it. Are we gonna get it this time? Maybe one more? Oh no, I got that. We got this, we got this. Wheels are spinning at 30 miles an hour. It's cutting power though. God, why do you cut power? Note to the Honda developers, sometimes you don't want to cut power. Now maybe they're doing that to protect the transmission, fine. Because uh, so far we haven't had an overheat, which is good, but on the other hand, would love to make it through without getting that power cut. Okay, C can we get progress here? Yeah, I feel like we're gonna get it this time. All the way, baby, all the way to the top. You got this, you got this, 31, 32, and boom, we made it to grandma's house. That was, oh, come on, really? I'm like a foot away. Okay, we're just gonna crab over into position. <laughs> okay, we made it. Ah, oh, that was hard. But, you know, we did it. And the Honda Pilot didn't even overheat. The Honda Pilot Trail Sport, this thing's awesome. So that's the huge advantage of the Pilot over the Passport. The Pilot is all new and it has a reworked rear drive unit, which the Passport does not. Also, it has additional cooling on the tranny, so you're not gonna overheat quite so much. So overall, yeah, very impressed with this crossover. If I was picking a mid-size three row, this would definitely be on my list. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share our videos. We make them for you, and I hope you enjoy. That was fun. <laughs>